is Frey doing an audio commentary for WCReplays.com. This audio is copyrighted 2006, WCReplays.com. Um, I should inform you all that um, just before doing this audio, recording this audio commentary, I was uh, trying to play some uh, Warcraft on, on Bnet, and uh, God himself did not want me slacking off and playing Warcraft. He wanted me doing this audio, so he threw down a great lightning bolt, like, probably like three feet from my apartment, and fucked up my internet connection. <laughs> so, now I cannot actually play Warcraft, and I'm forced to work on my audio like I'm supposed to. So, uh, yeah, this, this audio is ordained by the Lord, so you should fear it. <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, is it going to be Ghost Stop versus Taker? Um, please get this paused at the one minute mark. I'm actually going to talk just a teeny bit about the build order. Um, while you're doing that, um, this is a. I'll, I'll talk about the game. This is um, a matchup between Undead, and we're of course doing it from the Undead perspective. Fog of War off, by the way. Um, so. Uh, it's going to be Undead vs. Orc on Lost Temple, which I believe in a recent interview, I didn't actually listen to it because it's like 90 minutes long, but I believe I uh, heard the Grapevine Freak describe this as being the most imbalanced matchup since 1.13 Elf or something like that. So, um, I, I don't think it's maybe that bad, but it it's definitely not a favorable uh, map and race combination for the Undead player. Um, it Orc tends to get a high-level hero very quickly and tends to get a lot of wind riders, and you tend to not be able to do anything about it because the map's kind of spread out, and it's very easy for your opponent to expand on. Um, okay, I'll quit babbling on and whining about what a difficult matchup it is, and we'll actually get the game unpaused. Uh, one minute mark uh, from Ghost Stop's point of view. Fog of War on, please. And uh, we'll get this going in three... Two, one, unpause. Okay, um, Ghost Stop's build order here is Altar, Ziggurat, Crypt, and then Tomb of Relics. Um, he's going early Altar against Orc because um, he wants to go for a creep harass. Um, I, I in this case, in this game, actually, Taker goes for the Farseer, but um, a lot of times, what people, what Orc players will do, and it's it's kind of nasty is um, they'll start out with a Blade Master, and they're going to power creep him up to level 3, like, really fast. And they can get that ready and have him, like, in your base, killing your peons, um, like, when you're about right about halfway through your tech. It really sucks. Um, and um, you can do stuff with, like, Nerubian Towers and Dust and your Ghouls and all, and, and, and it's pretty easy to stop, like, a level 1 Blade Master that comes, like, ra running straight into your base. But when he's level 3, he drops the Acolyte so damn fast, you really don't have time to migrate them out of trouble. Anyway, uh, one of the ways you can do to stop this is pop your Death Knight out as early as possible and try and find where your opponent is creeping and uh, slow him down, use coil to steal creeps from him. Um, what most players I've seen do is they, they send like just a single unit like a ghoul or an acolyte scouting and then to find out kind of where their base is, and then they send the death knight to the middle and just kind of run him around to the various creeping spots, including like um, their expansion, their natural expansion. Um, until they find their opponent so they can harass him. Um, well, uh, Ghost Stop just found him at the <laughs> expense of an Acolyte, which is now a pool of black goo. Uh, and so he's going to run down there and try to harass him, um, which, you know, it, it's normally a pretty good strategy, and under normal circumstances, Taker would probably be creeping either the, um, you know, one of these little uh, southern bases, probably... Uh, the, the Rock Golem might be a little bit too much for him to take on at this point. So I would, you know, if I were playing this, I would expect that he was going to be right here where um, where Ghost Stop just looked. But he's actually not creeping that. Uh, he seems to have given Ghost Stop the slip. And Ghost Stop is going to spend the next, like, few minutes, I think, trying to figure out where the hell uh, this guy is creeping. Um, did he run to the middle? He's not there. Um, 
it's uh, it's a mystery. And um, I, I, if you, if you want to turn off the fog of war and find out where he actually is, um, you can do that. But it's I don't know. I, I would rather get the sympathetic experience for the undead player at this point. Um, okay, let's pause it in three, two, one. Pause. Um, because I want to take a look at Ghost Stop's base, which is going to be the thing that, uh, the, the, the number one thing that really saves his ass, despite the fact that, um, he's about to get into a, a really unpleasant situation here. Um, there's a, he, uh, Taker sent a single grunt to, um, to go harass, which is, it's kind of unusual. I usually see this done with wolves or something, but, um, he sent a single grunt to go harass Ghost Stop's acolytes. Um, however, Ghost Stop has a really nice little um, setup here. He's he's got two ziggurats stacked like vertically below his his gold mine, and um, I'm going to I'm going to uh, forgive me for pausing the game for so long. This is really kind of the meat of this audio, so I definitely want to make sure I get all this right and not get interrupted by a battle or anything like that. Um, what these two ziggurats are doing um, is they're creating kind of a vertical line in conjunction with his gold mine that don't allow any units that are bigger than, you know, an acolyte to actually get through it. So that grunt, if he wants to chase, you see where the acolyte was originally mining. In order to chase that acolyte, um, he has to actually, that grunt has to go all the way around both of those ziggurats and the altar. Um, whereas the acolyte can just kind of slip through uh, behind the gold mine, so it, it it buys him a lot of time whenever he's trying to run acolytes away from a unit. Um, the basic idea of principle, like behind this works, is uh, something uh, a guy named Grom Ice Cream. I love that name, by the way. But uh, Grom Ice Cream on the forums uh, saved me a lot of time by explaining very concisely. Um, here's the deal. You can think of all the units in the game. For, you can, fortunately, you can divide them up into small and large. There's really just two classes of, of size whenever you're looking at how units pass through buildings. Um, ghouls, acolytes, spirit wolves, footmen, um, all the other worker units and skeletons, um, and maybe a couple others in there that I've missed are small units and everything else is large. Um, now, there are certain building formations that allow only a small unit to pass through, and they don't allow a large unit to pass through. And um, to do this, we're going to divide um, our buildings into being soft-sided and hard-sided. Uh, the only hard-sided buildings in the game are ziggurats and trees. Now, ziggurats and trees, when placed right up smack next to each other... Um, do not allow any units to pass through them, so they basically just create a solid wall. Now, soft-sided buildings are pretty much everything else in, the, like, every other undead building with the exception of the necropolis and gold mine. So if you stick a ziggurat next to a, um, like, a, a, a altar of darkness, um, an acolyte is going to be able to pass through the space between those two buildings, but a hero or a grunt can't. Um, also, uh, if you want to create another way to create a small gap is to place two ziggurats like one space away from each other so that they're not totally smashed up against each other, but they're um, just a notch away. And that will only allow um, the small units to get through. So um, you can use that and just kind of remember those things. Don't really worry too much about the necropolis and the... the um, the gold mine, they don't really block much of anything, and they're kind of weird. Um, so I just think that'll give you a kind of nice overview of what's going on here as um, Ghost Stop's base saves his butt. Okay, let's uh, get this game back rolling in a 3, 2, 1, unpause. So um, what's kind of happening in the middle is... Um, Ghost Stop has kind of given up on finding where the hell Taker is, is creeping. And he's just going to cut, try and get his Death Knight, uh, Death Knight up in levels. I guess until he can kind of figure out what's going on here. He's actually uh, he's sending a skeleton to like scout his own natural and see if maybe the guy decided to go sneak creep that and maybe throw some towers up at it or something. 
Um, but, you know, every once in a while, especially when you're playing ladder, this sort of thing happens where you just can't figure out what the hell your opponent is up to, and usually when it boils down to it, uh, after a while, you have to give up and just go creep. So, um, that's exactly what Ghost Stop is doing. Um, he's doing a fairly standard, um, standard build order here, uh, what I usually try to do is remember to start my graveyard when my Halls of Dead is halfway complete. In fact, I will go ahead and build it um, as soon as I really get the, the lumber, because it's one of those buildings that I tend to forget, um, and that's just something to watch out for, uh, any buildings that you tend to forget. Okay, uh, there's a Grunt and Ghoul skirmish going on in the middle. Um, in in a fight between grunts and ghouls, um, you absolutely want to be going for surrounds. Don't um, don't ever just kind of attack move and let your ghouls swipe at things because you're just you're not going to kill anything, and odds are you're going to end up losing uh, losing some ghouls yourself if you do that. Um, but if you actually try to surround grunts, um, it's 200 gold from your opponent and a decent bit of experience for your death knight every time you uh, you pull that off. Now I think uh, once again Ghostop is is kind of taking a guess, thinking maybe he's gone and creeped that expansion out now. So I'm going to go check it with my ghouls and just you know try to nail it with my army. Sometimes. Again, when uh, another thing besides just giving up and creeping that you can do it against an opponent that you can't figure out what he's doing is to just kind of guess uh, and guess with your whole army. Yeah, it gets you accused of map hacking sometimes when. Uh